there are several core elements that come to mind when you think of a Disney animated feature. The fantastical fairy tale like settings, the heroic princes and princesses, and the lovable talking creatures that travel amicably alongside those characters. It's hard to imagine a world without Disney. Everywhere we go, it seems almost impossible to escape the reach of those three black circles. They exploded into mainstream media in the early 1920s as Disney Brothers Cartoon Studio, with cartoons such as The Skeleton Dance and Steamboat Willie. Nearly 100 years and just as many name changes later, the company remains at the head of animation even more so than when they began. But what if I told you this tried and true formula for success almost killed the company? From the late 1960s to the mid-1980s, Disney experienced what can only be referred to as rock bottom. The clock was ticking and Walt Disney Animation Studios had continued to fail to intrigue the interest of new audiences. In an interview with Starlog Magazine at the time, producer Joe Hale said, One of the problems we've had in the last few years is that Steven Spielberg, George Lucas, and others have moved in and taken over special effects. They do in live action what we used to do only in animation. If we are going to have any kind of impact and keep this industry going, we must go farther in animation than they have in live action. In 1973, Walt Disney Pictures acquired the rights to author Lloyd Alexander's five-novel fantasy epic, The Chronicles of Prydane. The novels were based on Welsh mythology and depicted a young farmhand who dreams of becoming a famous warrior. The film would loosely incorporate story elements in most of the characters from the first two books in the series. After multiple delays, company shakeups, and the increasing popularity of more mature features in the early 1980s, Disney began production on their long dormant project based on the novels titled The Black Cauldron. The film follows an assistant pig keeper named Taryn, who dreams of leaving to become a great warrior and battle the evil Horned King. Taryn's dreams become reality once he and his mentor Dalvin learned that the Horned King is looking for a mystical black cauldron that will allow him to raise an unstoppable undead army called Cauldron Born. Fearing that the Horned King will use their young pig's oracular abilities to locate the cauldron, Taryn flees the farm to take her to safety. Along the way, Taryn befriends a young princess named Alonwi, a bard named Fluterflam, and a dog-like creature sporting a mustache named Gurgi. Together, they race to locate the cauldron before the Horned King. When originally optioned to the company by lead animators Frank Thomas and Ollie Johnston, it was touted as the next Sleeping Beauty with plans to make the picture in stunning 70mm. To this day, The Black Cauldron and Sleeping Beauty are the only Disney animated features to be shot in 70mm. This wide anamorphic aspect ratio allows for the rich background paintings made painstakingly by the artists to be displayed in their entirety. The unparalleled detail, shown in set pieces like The Horned King's Castle and The Lands of Morva, conveys scale and age in a way that Disney has yet to top. Unfortunately, over the course of the production, the film experienced heavy studio interference. The newly appointed Disney Studio chairman, Jeffrey Katzenberg, was worried that the film was far too dark for their audiences. This was due to a test screening where many of the children ran out of the theater screaming as a result of the undead soldiers mauling people. He demanded that the scenes of the Cauldron Born be cut down, even going as far as to edit the film himself. After several setbacks and delays, The Black Cauldron was released on July 26, 1985. At the time of its release, it was the most expensive animated film of all time, with a budget of $44 million. The film was also the first of Disney's to garner a PG rating, while also being the first animated Disney feature to utilize CGI. Despite all their best efforts, The Black Cauldron was a commercial and critical failure for Disney, squeaking by with a total of $21 million at the box office. At the time, many critics felt that the film lacked many of the core elements that encompassed a standard Disney film. It had obvious influences from prominent media such as the Star Wars films, He-Man and the Masters of the Universe, and a healthy dose of The Lord of the Rings. Headlines described the film as a major disappointment. Frank Thomas and Ollie Johnston were also disappointed with the film. They said it lacked the humor, pathos, and the fantasy which had been so strong in Lloyd Alexander's work. 
Following the film's critically panned release, the future of the company seemed bleak. CEO Michael Eisner heavily considered shutting down the studio and outsourcing animations elsewhere in order to minimize financial risks. However, Roy E. Disney and Jeffrey Katzenberg were convinced that the once great animation studio could be profitable for the company again. Together, they worked to reinvigorate the company, opting for quick and dirty releases every year instead of the two to four year turnaround release schedule that the company had been built on. With this change in approach, they ushered in what would become known as the Disney Renaissance of animation, producing films like The Little Mermaid and Beauty and the Beast. The Black Cauldron would fade into obscurity in the company's larger filmography and wouldn't see a home release until 1998, 13 years after its theatrical debut. With this home release, an entirely new wave of viewers were introduced to the fantastical story of Prydain and its perils. This is around the time that I had been introduced to the film as well. With the release of the Star Wars prequels, the resurgence of a new He-Man cartoon, and an inherent appreciation for darker tones, it was almost as if this story was made for me at this time in my life. I longed for the mature storytelling and visuals that were on display before me. The story is admittedly derivative with our hindsight into media over the nearly 36 years after its release. But when accompanied with bombastic score, stunning visuals, and excellent cast, I cannot help but adore this film that so many either forget about or hate. The Black Cauldron forced Disney's animation studio to adapt and overcome nearly two decades of stagnation, launching it back into one of the most prolific studios in the world.